Um, so uh, the first disclosure is I am not a designer. Uh, what I'm going to show you is probably not that pretty compared to what you've seen already. Um, my challenge more is in how to try to get people to understand what they're looking at um, when we don't even really know what it means. And I'll show you some examples of that. So biomedical data is really complex. Uh, medical data is complex uh, for two main reasons. One is the concept that it represents is dynamic, and I'm going to use it again, complex. Um, and the data are very wide for that reason. And the reason why uh, this is so challenging is because we don't really know everything about medicine. Uh, medicine is a very vast unknown. We probably know much more about space and extrasolar planets than we know about our own bodies and how they function. So when we collect data and try to inform people about what we're finding, it makes it really difficult um, because we have to try to convey that information in a meaningful way. And what I did is I threw up probably one of the most common ways to represent a high-dimensional biomedical data set, which is completely useless for almost every purpose, which is this hairball network. So this network, and look, it's in a great journal. And so here's a boring visualization in a great journal. Um, this network represents the interactome, how genes are interacting with each other to make a cell function. Incredibly beautiful biology happening there, and very little meaning going on in this figure. I'm going to show you a few more of these things. Um, so here's that same one I just talked about, so I'll skip that one. Uh, and then people started to come up with different ways to try to structure their networks, but networks still being the predominant kind of central theme. So here is the human disease network. This is how diseases are comorbid in, the, in humans um, across all possible diseases, across a wide range of people. You can see now we have some structure, some clustering, some size dynamics. We're making it a little bit more interesting, but still pretty difficult to interpret. Now you'll see figures a lot like this are pretty common now. We're still focused on networks and network, using networks to convey biological information, but we're really putting context into that network. We're starting to say, this is a module that has a particular function that we're studying, and this is how it relates to another function. It's starting to give you a little bit more intuition about the underlying medicine that's going on. Um, and then someone came along about five years ago, and you've already seen a couple of these. I saw D3 had re-implemented one of these plots and invented what is called a circos plot, which is a really rich format. On the surface, it's like, OK, that's pretty. It looks like an iris. I like it. It's very intuitive. Um, it, like, it looks pleasing to the eye. Um, but there's actually something very profound happening and changing here in this visualization. And that is that the data that we are seeing here, which is all of the variance in, breast, in a particular breast cancer cell line, um, is being displayed on a structure that is informative. So in this case, around the outside, you can see that there's these bands, and there's these breaks in these bands. And each one of those corresponds to a chromosome in the human genome. And now we're starting to put a lot of context, and instead of just kind of pasting our context on with arrows and text saying, here is the context. We're actually displaying it in a way uh, that we can visually digest it. We can see how the interaction, the interaction between chromosome 1 and chromosome 3 at a glance. And these became very popular. They're used for a really wide range of visualizations. Um, and here we are representing all human DNA variation. Here we're representing the variants in the human genome that contributes to disease. So all the, human, all the disease genes that are known in humans. So basically, context matters a lot. So I'll give you one um, specific story very quickly. We recently came out with a study. We analyzed 1.7 million patients' records. Uh, and we found that the month that you're born in is actually important predictive of what diseases you'll eventually get in your lifetime in 30 years, 40 years down the road. And what that means is that the season or the environment in which you're born into is important for development. That's something that's pretty intuitive. So we analyzed 1.7 million patient records. There's billions of data points represented in those patient records. We found 55 of these. And this is how we decided uh, this is the basic visualization. So there's two different ways that we can show it, your disease risk based on when you were born for atrial fibrillation from January to December. Same visualization, but now we've wrapped it in a circle. Um, most people kind of like the one on the right better, just because uh, year is a cycle, so why not take advantage of that? 
And then this is the one that we created for the media and which got picked up by a lot of different sources, which represents all of our findings. So there's uh, 1,600 different diseases represented, almost 2 million patients represented. Uh, it was reproduced in, across the internet at a variety of different news outlets, um, which covered the study, some of which really went above and beyond and created their own visualizations, which were really thorough and in-depth studies thinking about what this really means for human health. Um, and they made some really interesting visualizations. Uh, it's a little funny. Um, and then some did really bad things, like over-interpreted or just sensationalized it. Uh, and so hopefully what you try to do with your visualizations and your message when you find a new research finding is not this. Um, so maybe that's a little bit of failure on our part and meaning we can always do a little bit more. Um, but now um, I'll take your questions after and thank you so much for your time. <laughs>